Hello. In this video, I'll go through the uh, MATLAB and GitHub project that I currently have up on, on GitHub and talk about some of the files on there, as well as run through a uh, live script in MATLAB. This one right here that goes through how I actually trained the reinforcement learning agent. Um, but before that, I just want to briefly touch on some of the things that's in this GitHub project. So you can see this it's uh, the pertinent system identification files I used to get uh, my system identification, uh, basically my model for my sensor and my servo. And with the servo is sort of cool. I have these three scripts here. So say I wanted to test a uh, a uh, chirp signal, so a linearly increasing sine wave, uh, li linearly increasing frequency sine wave um, on my servo. Then I define the the chirp here. This is the input signal. And then here I actually run the test. So maybe I'll add another section here. I'll make sure that, to push this to the GitHub. Um, it's and then you run the trial, so you have to have all the hardware hooked up. It was interesting to see nonetheless. And then um, I used MATLAB's image image uh, processing toolbox, a function that I derived from there to actually get the beam angle over time um, by tracking a set of pins, as you might have seen in the report or in the, uh, the presentation that I gave. And then here I do some synchronization and some scaling to get the actual output signal. So there's a, there's a bunch of different um, sort of functions and scripts throughout uh, the GitHub project that maybe you'll enjoy um, checking out. For example, basically how I did the a proportional derivative controller or a reinforcement learning controller, it, the bulk or the meat of how that actually worked is in this code. And it'll output a bunch of different uh, plots of diagnostics. So might want to check that out if you're thinking about doing some like uh, this yourself, uh, just to get an inspiration or something. It's a really fun project, and MATLAB makes it really easy to do all this. Um, live scripts make it super easy to to tune and um, tune your controller, and and quite quite nice. So I did mention that in the in the report. I mentioned that MATLAB perhaps is not the the number one best program for for this sort of application because it's an interpreted language or the Arduino has to interpret each command as opposed to the program being compiled onto Arduino. So it's a it has a slower loop frequency, but nonetheless, I mean it, it was very fun to fun to work with. And hopefully you'll see that in the um, in this live script that I'm about to go go through, in which I train a deep deterministic policy gradient agent um, on my uh, ball and beam system. So I'll walk through and I'll actually run this, um, this whole script section by section. All right. So here's the table of contents. So you can jump, jump around, but, uh, first thing we'll do is just load or open this simulate model. And here it is. So you can see the agent currently is not, um, is not loaded in, but we'll do that in this live script. Um, so here's a simulate model, and this is also provided, so you can definitely um, in the GitHub, so you can definitely check this out and check out all this all the sub models. So here it is, and scope. So you'll see some of these scope uh, symbols. They correlate to this scope over here, um, which we'll eventually get to see uh, run and get some new results on using the reinforcement learning agent. So then the next section in the live script has to do with uh, the settings of my model. So you can basically have, I have settings for uh, my servo. So the max input I can give it is five in, in servo language. If you go through these files, you notice that servo language is not like degrees or it's not a, <laughs> it's not radians. It's, uh, on the 0 0.1 to 1 scale. So some of the math might be a little confusing, but just remember that. 
and then uh, the system identification methods that I did to find the, to find the noise, I, I load in here. In the first training session for the RL agent, there's no noise. So that's, that's why I over, overrode this, this line with this. All right. And here's the low pass filter that I actually had on the hardware. All right. So after you get through that, and then here's the plant transfer function I should mention. The next thing you do in the reinforcement learning workflow is I, I created the environment interface. So this defines observation information and action information and includes that in the environment. One cool thing here is you can define the reset function. So my reset function randomly places the ball uh, between 16 centimeters and 24 centimeters away from the middle of the beam on either end. So that's what this uh, section is all about. Unable, yep, so I didn't run this. So you have to make sure that you run each section. Um, all right, so now it's, now it's good. So now I go about creating the uh, deep deterministic policy gradient agent. And you can, uh, there's so much MATLAB documentation on that. I, I encourage you to check it out if you end up trying this on your own. Uh, one of the cool things about this project that I learned was you don't need 256 nodes. I learned that one by doing. And for because it's a smaller, uh, it's a rather simple system uh, to design a controller for. Can actually decrease the number of nodes uh, all the way down to four, and you'll see that it works. All right, so the next thing you do is uh, create the critic. So you can see a plot of the critic here once I define it. Um, there's a lot of information there, it has to do with neural networks. So I won't try to explain all that, but create the critic. And then because DDPG is uh, actor critic algorithm, you also need to create the actor and that's shown here. All right, and now create the agent. So the agent um, here's con uh, consists of an actor input, a critic input and a, the agent options. So I encourage you, there's so many hyperparameters um, with uh, in reinforcement learning to check these out and, and understand what these are. And then also uh, you should know here that for exploration to take place as opposed to just uh, optimization and stagnation, you need the, the reinforcement learning algorithm has to be stochastic. So you have to define um, a level of noise that you add to your to the reinforcement learning agent actions. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm defining the level, the standard deviation of the noise, which um, this scaling factor, basically this equation I got from uh, advice from MATLAB. And then I also define the decay. So at the, ideally, when it's, when the reinforcement learning agent converges on a solution, it'll stop, uh, the standard deviation and noise will decay. So we can start to exploit the uh, policy that seems to be working as opposed to having really noisy measurements. All right, so now I'm defining the agent. All right, and now train the agent. So you'll see here, there's some more uh, hyperparameters which you can define um, and look into. And then here's an older training session that seemed to uh, get satisfactory results and which my, uh, training actually ended because the moving average uh, got to a value of 80. So I'm, I'm certain that if I ran this right now, because everything was the same, the results after about 430 um, episodes, or in other words, there should be a time here. Um, or maybe about like 20 minutes, I think this was, uh, we'd find the reinforcement learning agent would find a solution. So uh, you can run it yourself if you go on my GitHub and get this file and, and run it. And what was interesting that we actually ended up doing on this project was we first trained the 
reinforcement learning agent with no noise from the sensors so just to get a baseline um, understanding or a baseline control policy and then we would add add the noise into the um, into the model and then train it on that so this this doesn't correspond to anything but maybe i'll just i'll just run this and just um all right so i actually have to i remember i have to include this stuff in here to find the maximum number of episodes maximum number of steps and now i can basically just run a training session with noise that's what i'm doing here and you'll get to see the malik has a great reinforcement learning episode manager it's called um but it's basically just the plot that we were looking at just a second ago and of course each blue dot represents an episode and we're plotting reward here over time so what's cool here is you can see what your reward function is doing by or you can basically see what the the agent is trying out so this black line represents the agent's uh the agent's action and then what the agent sees now is the blue the blue lines here position and velocity um so you can compare what's happening here with what's happening here and then you can determine the reward function um is it doing what you want it to like this trial this next trial is not very good so then all right you got very low reward it's very good and um i'll stop the training but eventually if you did this as well it would converge especially if you did what this script would do and start with this trained agent here so you start with with an agent that knows how to balance the ball when there is uh no noise so then when you add noise it actually starts with a pretty good um, policy for even with noise. And then it'll, it'll theoretically, it'll improve that uh, policy to handle noise. All right, and then if you wanted to simulate and and once, so once the training was over, if you wanted to see what the final policy did on your uh, model, then you would run this section. But we don't need to do that since we were just looking at it. And then here, in this last section, you can, because there's three uh, variables that are nice to plot for the control policy, right? In the system, there's position, velocity, and then the action is the uh, beam angle. Just because there's three variables, it's very nice to make, create a surface. So you definitely saw in the presentation and in the report that um, surface plots and contour plots were used to visualize the difference between the proportional derivative controller and the reinforcement learning agent. So yeah, that's uh, it was as simple as this for my ball and beam um, system. Thanks so much for watching. I'm really glad you're interested. I think it's really cool stuff. So please feel free to check out the GitHub and my YouTube and read the report for lots and lots more information. And um, all right, thank you so much.